Hello and welcome to this Python, Django, and Plotly Express live coding session. Today we're going to be continuing uh, with our project for Jerry Life, focusing on caregiver and uh, resident well-being in elder care facilities or communities. We're developing several data visualizations based on activities that are conducted by caregivers such as cleaning or pr food preparation you can see here and we're kind of looking at those activities from different angles over the course of time or as a whole like the totals and we're in particular looking at uh, a chart uh, that looks at the work percent over time how much uh, what proportion of the different staff uh, and volunteers roles are they're spending in different types of activities, different types of work activities. This is to uh, improve staff well-being and make sure that um, the staff are doing work that is um, kind of within their domain of expertise and also that the burden of work is not uh, falling too much to one particular role so we can forecast the staffing needs for the institutions. So there's an um, open ticket. This chart has a, had a couple of bugs. We first had a bug where it wasn't displaying the um, top series um, data correctly. The issue was that the bar width was one millisecond long because of the underlying data uh, is a date with no time just date and the charting library plotly uh, didn't really infer how to how wide or how what the granularity of that data was uh, that's been fixed we explicitly told plotly that each datum is one day and now we just need to fix a small remaining issue with the y-axis formatting here. We want these proportions to be expressed in, as percentages, but the raw data are numeric uh, 0 to 1, 0 to 100%. And we'd like the labels uh, to look like the bottom series. Now this is a bit nuanced, but I do have uh, an answer in this upstream ticket support request. So essentially, initially, the as mentioned, the top facet, facet row didn't even display. Uh, it was displaying basically one pixel wide or one, one millisecond wide in this context. And it turned out after some uh, discussion that uh, there was an easy way to tell it that the traces should be, that set the trace width basically to one day, which we have done. And then Nicholas Crutchkin, Crushton, sorry, has also been really gracious and helped um, provide support beyond their. Um, job, so to speak, uh, with uh, something I probably would have eventually figured out if I were to read the documentation close, more closely. I'm not exactly sure, um, but essentially these multi-series plots have multiple y-axes. This is one and this is another. And I was under the assumption that this would be declaratively um, describing all y-axes, but it turns out it's only for one of the, in this case two, but this could be a multi, this is a multi-series chart, so there could be three, four, and five different uh, roles who are going to be doing the work here. So this could be um, many more times, and rather than, I don't know in advance how many there will be, how many roles there will be, because the end user can actually input this data. The, the roles are part, are defined in the admin, section, caregiver roles. There's an arbitrary number of these, we don't know, in advance. So um, there's a there's an imperative way of, do, of defining that tick format instead of uh, the declarative way I was hoping it worked. 
but only worked for one uh, y-axis. So let's go ahead and uh, change that, and then I think we can finalize this pull request and close the upstream issue in Plotly. They've they've uh, split off um, a couple of other issues based on the discussion here. So my support request has been resolved, and there was a genuine, um, we could say, a bug in a library or an edge case. So we're going to go to the work chart because this uh, essentially work report is part of our work app to find it and in the views pi oh actually i can clean this up now can't i let me double check ah so i'm feeding it with temporary data so we're going to have a little bit of cleanup to do a couple of bits of cleanup but let me just get the chart to render x-axis y-axis labels correctly Update traces. And we'll go closer look over here. This is a really big view function. Uh, aside from the temporary data, uh, it's one big prepare charts function. I'd like to maybe eventually split that out. The smaller chunks, but I was not really able to kind of think of a way to refactor it right now. That in a moment. Uh, so here, actually, it's the line you want to change. It's going to uh, basically update all of them imperative, uh, imperatively. It's going to loop over each of those. That's, and you refresh. There it is. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, very cool. Yeah, so we'll commit this. What I want to do is And I'll just try to do attribution. Very cool. Now let's just clean it up and sync the changes. So this temporary data is no longer there, but I do have some annotated data right here that we're not using now because I wanted to uh, provide a reproducible result. But now our chart should update with uh, basically the same data. I was um, I just serialized that or just created a. <laughs> A list of dictionaries more or less hand by hand but uh, from the original data and let's say let's go ahead and add another um, report something like April and May, May 1st for the um, nurse any home uh, food preparation so we'll say May 1st so it's right in the chart and let's say uh, I'll go back to the report. Yes, so the nurse has spent 100% of their time on May 1st. Ah, okay. Oh, there's May 1st, 30 minutes. 
very cool. We might replace this chart uh, with one that's done through Plotly. I'm not sure if Plotly has a, a calendar heat map or um, I guess that's what's called a calendar heat map. Like a histogram. Um, well, I'll have to look at that. Basically all of these charts here are done through Plotly Express. And this, uh, originally I was going to use Apache eCharts uh, but it was just having weird problems. It's kind of hard to describe. I can't quite remember. Uh, it just didn't seem like a very stable developer experience for the most part. Uh, the charts weren't responsive uh, by default. Uh, there was some other quirkiness to the library. So we switched back to using Plotly. Okay, so let's clean this up. And then the last chart on the page is that uh, calendar heat map. Ah, yeah. Essentially, prepared charts would have like sub functions for each of the charts where everything up to here is encapsulated into a function. I think I should do that as part of this pull request. It's a bit going to be a bit verbose, but I'll. Uh, It'll save uh, some scheming because some of these are doing more advanced things uh, out of necessity. That's just kind of more or less polluting this whole function. Let's just clean uh, commit this cleanup. And uh, try a quick refactor. Hey, Gaurav, Gaurav, sorry, welcome. And my GitHub profile is here, github.com slash Briley. If you wanna check it out, the project here uh, is under Jerry Life Caregiving. And uh, it's, you know, so it's open source, any, uh, Ideas and pull requests are welcome. And if you're interested in getting involved in this or similar projects, I uh, can help you out. Or if you've got a project you'd like to showcase, let me know and we can check it out on the stream. All right, so that was very cool. I'll just go ahead and close this while we're here, then I'll do the cleanup. And then we can uh, transition over to another pull request I have in pro progress. Process, progress, yeah. since the other issues were clear. Interesting. Very cool. All right, let's just do a small, a small refactoring after a sip of tea.
So yeah, basically the idea of clean code is that you want to apply, uh, you want to keep things organized, and each function should really have only one purpose, or like one level of abstraction. And like the movie Inception, the function can go down into deeper levels, but you shouldn't have dreams within dreams that are like all part of the same dream. They kind of should be the different dreams. So what I'm going to do is create some functions that take, that handle all this, these sub dreams. that there we go so our prepare function so charts function is going to prepare yada 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 chart this is going to be uh, a bit verbose and I might need to rename some of these They don't need to be necessarily part of the view. And this will basically take everything here. These one at a time. This. Actually, interesting. I'm using this value. Uh, I need to pass that to the context. Okay. Right. That's not it. That's not a chart. Okay, I got it. That is just um, just one value, and I think I'm using that to control the display of the charts. Oh, I could return context. I'm not sure how messy that's going to get. I mean, it would, um, Here. So that's going to essentially add these all to the context and return that.
one wanted to be aware of if these values are used in subsequent functions that were, would be uh, there would be a dependency on the order that, that they run it looks like that's not the case work by type chart Do these one at a time and just you know, take a look at the front. I think this will eventually be a chart if we do it in Plotly, but um, handing these variables off to uh, JavaScript. Um, here, where I'm. Handing the data into the JavaScript context and then rendering this calendar and nice thing so this is done with um, Apache eCharts which is a good library but it just uh, I'm not confident in moving the project over to it uh, documentation also is a little bit challenging spotty um, can't remember the all the concerns I had but um, and just having to write a lot of JavaScript so the cool thing about um, Plotly Express is a uh, we're just going to write Python pretty much, and it's going to render out all the charts. So this is how we're preparing the work by type chart right here, just straight Python. No, uh, no JavaScript is necessary, which this is mostly declarative um, chart configuration, but I've got to pass in these you know, values, parsing it, and um, just a little bit of um, disconnect. I'd rather keep things more pure Python. So that's that, but let's see. So the first one did work, the charts rendering, it's got all the, the context, the data, so we can move to the next chart safely and I'll just do these all as one commit. So essentially we're gonna bring this chart through. Now it's a little bit different. I'm trying to be consistent here. I'm just thinking about consistency. Here I'm I'm naming the um, context key. This is a dictionary, context dictionary. In this one I'm mutating it uh, inside the function so I don't see kind of what's going on. I just know that some stuff happened here. I'm explicitly uh, mutating it. Uh, and this gives me a little more clarity because this ties directly to the template. I do need to create corresponding uh, DOM, uh, not DOM, but the more or less the charts template does call for these HTML here, so I've got to be able to track those. And it probably is nicer to not have to dig into each function to get the name of the context variable. This one's a little bit of a different case. So I'll introduce some inconsistency here uh, so that I can 
Um, because this will be refactored. The, the consistent way I'll do it will be to have these context variables declared here. That way, if I need to change the wiring real quick, I can just do it at one level of abstraction, which is essentially this is preparing charts and adding them to the template context. So that's an appropriate um, because we're that's an appropriate um, level of code here where we're defining the key. So it's literally going into the context. So that's just my thought process here. Let's say we do need to put this in and dedent that. So then I will re do this. I mean, either way is fine. Return is fine. Well, I don't like to have too much after the return statement, even though it's just one statement. So. Oops, charts. So yeah, it's essentially going to prepare the data, prepare the chart, and return it. Now granted, this is abstracting, well, I think it's the right level of abstraction. The, we're calling this two, more or less three methods to prepare this chart. We've got to get the data and uh, Tell the chart what to render where and what the labels should be. So, all right, I believe that should work. And then we're returning the actual chart. So, that makes sense to prepare the chart. That's what the function says it's doing, and that's what we're getting back. And then we're, uh, you know, preparing the charts. So, we're doing all of them and adding them to the context. So I think it's this right level of abstraction. Just kind of thinking aloud here. There's no like right or fully wrong way. It's not, you know, absolute the idea here is just kind of give myself less to think about and the opportunity to dig deeper when I need okay so now we're going to continue here same pattern long function name right? And actually, now that I think about it, we don't need to pass the context because we've abstracted it. I think this is a nicer way of organizing it. We're not muting the context, we're preparing a chart return the chart so this is now serving a function it's agnostic of what what's going on here all it knows is it's preparing a chart not for what or where it'll be used yeah cool so what are we doing yep we'll create And there's going to be a really long function here. I'm going to change the name of the context variable and everything. Doesn't take any arguments. Doesn't need any arguments. Everything is, is stands alone. So standing in just a moment, it will be. Yeah, and then these um, functions could be moved to another library, like charts.py or something like that, and keeping our view code more succinct. Things like this could be, a, it's like a utility function. And this could be moved to you know, queries.py or something like that, more or less. It's preparing the data. Different ways of organizing this. We don't have this really, it's getting longer and longer. So that seemed to work. Now we got, uh, that was one of these down here.
Yeah. So this is where the, this is the big one. Slightly. Slightly shorter and still explicit. And then we need to go to our template and use that. Right here. Right. Changing the wiring. See that kind of case in point. I've got this template and the view. I, I just having to change the wiring at one level of abstraction in the view. And the rest of this is not really so much on my mind at this point because I don't need to double check how uh, the chart was prepared and more or less updated and stuff like that. But what I need to do then is actually It's long. It's encapsulating a lot. Oh, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. What did I do wrong here? Yeah, I've got the function. Okay, so these are separate functions. Right here, this is what I need. And this one's a little different because I needed to act on it a few times. I needed to create the chart and then apply some uh, more imperative logic uh, to format the y-axis, remove facet prefix, just some stuff that uh, uh, a little bit of polish to finish this chart off. So it's not just getting the data, preparing the chart in this case. That's hence the abstraction. Making this function prepare charts more clear. See, now we're just basically modifying the context. And we should still have the same number of charts and no yellow screen. Looking good. All right. I am going to rename this as well. for consistency.
We all run the quick myself. So I can either run the query twice in function or pass it or encapsulate these in the one function in passing the context or grab the data in the parent function and pass it into the here. Yeah. Or another way would be there might be a way in Plotly to specify, since we're using the same data to create two like um, series plots. None of them are, each has trade-offs. That would be probably the ideal one. But, uh, or I could uh, maybe figure out a like, um, what do you call it, tokenizers? I don't know. Some data apparently. It's a little bit messy, inconsistent. These, are, these two charts are using the same data. So the context approach where we pass the context and mutate it into each of these functions and then get context back uh, would be the cleanest because that would allow me to abstract these a little bit better. This is a step in the right direction. Let me just continue this path and I can change that down the road. And essentially, I'm not sure that that would be better because I would still need to prepare this data outside of the function. So, it's trade offs, it's a bit of trade offs. Because we're using the same data, we're just That also makes it a little bit more opaque where I could compare them side by side. Or wait. See, now I'm confusing myself. 